those of you wondering if tier 8 was missing any premiums, well, just to put all your fears at rest, Wargaming, in their infinite wisdom, have released yet another tier 8 premium. This time, the Chrysler K. But, is it any good? Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz and we're now having a look at the Chrysler K, what I like to call the big boxy yank, a brand new American Tier 8 premium heavy tank. Just in case you're wondering if Tier 8 were missing any of their uh, premiums, well, I guess they were because here's a new one. Now, I could go on about how great the armour is, unfortunately it's not uploaded onto Armour Inspector yet, but I can tell you it's, it's okay, it's pretty funky armour wise. Okay, it's a box, but if you can see there, the sides are slightly sloped, and it is pretty thick. It's a heavy beast of a tank. Mm, anything else that's going for it? Well, it's got a good turn of speed for a heavy. I mean, look at all those road wheels. You know, you'll get 40 kilometers an hour out of it quite easily, and it's American, which means if you stick it all down, then oddly, you know, you will bounce quite a few shots. However, it's got not a bad gun. So I was watching the review that Martin Dogger posted earlier and he is spot on. I mean this gun is the same that you get in the T32 which if you play a T32 or you own a T32 and you've rolled out in a T32 you will know is pretty hit and miss at the best of times. This however is the first game I rolled out in this Chrysler K. Now I have to point out I don't have a press account with Wargaming, I don't work for Wargaming, I'm not affiliated with Wargaming. So I actually had to spend gold to get this tank to give you, the people, a review. Which I didn't mind doing because I was intrigued in the tank. So this is my first game. That being the case, I'm, I'm gonna not, I'm, be, I'm gonna be top tier in the tank because it's the first game and obviously when you're in a premium tank you get preferential MM for the first few games. However, that doesn't move away from the fact that, you know, if you look at this gun, okay, I'm doing reasonable damage, 1,200 there, bounce 480, but in a moment, it will do what it normally does, which is bounce. So, there's number one, it bounces, but I get a bounce back in kind, which is quite nice. Now, I've had to stick myself over here, because that IS-2 is plowing things into my side. Now, when the tanks open up in front of you, like that did then, then yeah, you're going to pen. It's as simple as that, but I'm not going to pen him here, I'm doing everything I can, but it's just not going to pen, it's as simple as that. So, you know, 1,531 damage at tier 8 isn't exactly great. The other thing, the damage that this thing dishes out is only around 310 top end alpha, and that's with me running it with calibrated shells. The HP is 1500, its view range is about 271, the DPM is just shy of 2000, the penetration is about 208, which isn't great, and the damage, as I said, is about 310 on your standard AP. Now that will obviously go up to 257 on the APCR with a damage of 260, so that comes down quite significantly. The rate of fire, well, you're going to get at almost six and a half shells a minute, which equates to about a nine and a half second reload. Aim timing is quite good. And the gun depression, well, it's a measly 6%, but don't forget, this is a rear mounted turret. As you can see, you know, we struggle to pen the IS there. We eventually win the battle, and I eventually get a third class because it's a brand new tank and we're just rolling out in it. 1500 damage is pretty pants. Now, here I am rolling out on Middleburg. This, I'll tell you now, it, you know, we lose this game. But I put this replay in to show you how effective this tank can actually be. Because once you get used to its armour, and once you get used to its gun, you really could be a menace. So, we've taken the A cap. I know they're on the B cap, you can see them all there, you can hear it, and all that sort of stuff. So, we're pretty, I'm pretty confident of where they are. I'm hoping that they're going to push around this corner anytime soon, and without fail, here comes an M6 experiment. 
Um, yeah, I stick one into the side of him there, get quite a nice roll. Oh, and there comes an SU-101, um, and I can stick one in the front of him. As you can see, I'm going to pen him easily and get a 251 roll. My Panther 2 has gone, but thankfully so is the experiment. He's gone too. Now let's have a look at that SU-100 again. Can we get anything onto him? Yeah, we can take him out with a 277 roll. So I've dished out just shy of, just shy of 1,000 damage, and I've already taken a kill. There's an IS-5. Oh, just doesn't pen. Now, you know, he pens me, I don't pen him. Let's have a second go. Get it to the bottom of that pike note, and yeah, there we go, 329. So you can pen, although it's a bit hit and miss, as I say. And thankfully, somebody takes the IS out. So we're looking not bad, really. It's four against four. There's an IS-6. Oh my god, I can't pen anything. You saw that. I mean, the, the player in the IS-6 is actually quite a good player. I, I know the guy. He's got a decent win right, and he certainly knows how to handle that tank. And he knows how to side scrape, and he knows how to angle it correctly. But I still managed to get a 350 straight into him, which is nice. But there's no point in me trying to batter him, because he'll batter me easier. So I'm going to try and get round here and get onto this AMX. Now, there's only two of us left. When it's now two against four. There is an AT-15A. He looks a bit AFK. He is now, because I've just killed him. So we've now done just shy of 2,000 damage, and we've taken two kills. Now it's two against three. Now, the three are, unfortunately, a poor SIG, which is down there, and I didn't get loaded quickly enough. The IS-6 and an AMX, who's on next to nothing. I track the IS-6, which is something I really didn't want to do. I needed to put a shell into him to help my VK. I couldn't help it. Now that's a 300 roll into the IS-6, and this is where it becomes a problem. My VK is now gone. Um, I'm in trouble. It's as simple as that. I've lost quite a few hit points. I've got just over half left. I've got three pretty formidable tanks out there, although the AMX is a one-shot for me, I would like to think. So I'm going to try and go down here and take out the Borsig and the AMX if I can. Unbeknown to me, like I said, the IS-6 player is a pretty good player. He's come right around the back and he's trying to take me out. The uh, the IS-6 is over there, look. The AMX and the Borsig are giving me the runaround. I think I've got the AMX in my sights and I haven't. Because he tracks me and I shoot the building. Ah, pretty daft. It happens. But as you can see, I mean... I'm being slowly whittled down and slowly whittled down. I've done 2,100 damage. I've only bounced 200 and something. Can I finally get this AMX? Yeah, but with a 130 roll on an HE. That's just pants. So put the AP back in because there's no point. Get a nice bounce. Finally dispatch him. Two against two, but I'm not long for this world. And as you can see, we've done quite a lot of bounces now. I'm just shy of, what, 2,500 damage. No, missed the shot. I'm dead. I know I'm dead. And there we go. 500 bounce. 2,597 in damage. Not a bad tank in real terms. Three kills. Um, yeah, no, it happens. Out I roll again. This time on my favourite map, not Dynasty's Pill. Now, the thing about this tank is, if you stick it a hole down, it's like most American tanks. It will bounce till the cows come home, realistically. Although, it has got some weak spots on its turret. And, you know, it's a pretty big beastie. When it wants to, it will play ball. The reload is fantastic. So, a lot of people turn around and say, oh, it's an OP tank. Because the one in the PC game allegedly is. I haven't got World of Tanks PC, so I have no idea. When I've looked at this tank, I can assure you, this is not an OP tank in any way, shape or form. The armour, okay, it's pretty penable in certain places. You can wiggle it, you can jiggle it, you can angle it, and you can stick it all down, and you'll be okay. The reload is good, the damage is pretty mediocre. You can, however have a bit of fun in this tank. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. This tank is going for 15,000 gold or 17,000 gold with all the equipment unlocked. That's quite a lot of cash realistically for this tank. Especially when, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I absolutely hate tier, 10, uh, tier 8. And the reason I hate tier 8 is because it's just full of premium tanks. 
And the last thing you need is another premium tank. And, and that's exactly what you've got. You've got yet another premium tank. And it's a premium tank that doesn't bring anything special to the game. It brings something different. Watch this. See, you can pen the side of the turret quite easily in certain angles. It doesn't bring anything special to the game, in my opinion. It, all it brings is a bit of a boxy tank, something unique at um, the American tiers, uh, at tier 8 and the American tech line. It's not a tech tree tank, of course, but within the American sphere, it brings something slightly different. But is that worth 1,700 gold, really? Well, that's debatable. Obviously, I bought it, but I bought it because I'm a tank collector for one, and secondly, I, I wanted to do a review on it because my subs need to know if, whether to buy this or not. And all I can say is the following. It's up to you guys. Um, if I wasn't a tank collector and if I wasn't doing these videos, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't have bought it. It's as simple as that. And the reason I wouldn't have brought it is because, like I said, it doesn't really bring anything different to the game at tier 8. You know, you, you haven't got an OP tank. You haven't got a tank that's got amazing damage or, or whatever. You've just got a different tank, that's all. Something that the American line hasn't had. And I would say that, you know, it's up to you. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, you can knock some decent shots out of it. It is good fun, don't get me wrong. I haven't regretted purchasing it. I really, really haven't. Because, like I said, I, I enjoy collecting the tanks. And I, I quite enjoyed this tank. Okay, yes, I'm getting preferential MM because these are my first few games in it. But I enjoyed it. And, you know, the, the chances are I'll play it a couple more times and see how it gets on with it, get more used to it. And then, unfortunately, it'd be relegated because most of my tanks at tier 8 are relegated because it's just the premium tier. That's all it is. I mean, when you've got 30 tech tree tanks and 36 premium tanks, that tells me that it, it's, it's a tier that is only for the premium tanks. It, you know, if you go out in tier 8, you, you do so, and you're going to face premium tanks. It's simple, really. That's why I, I, I don't particularly like tier 8. I've always thought it was slightly broken. I, I think it's even more broken now. You've got 36 premiums in that tier as opposed to 30 tech tree tanks. And it's the only tier that has that, which, you know, it's a shame, really. And it, 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 it proves that, you know, this is why I said, did tier 8 really need another premium? They could have shoved this out as a collector. I mean, it's a unique tank. But then maybe people wouldn't have bought it. Who knows? Anyway, it is here. And like I said, I had fun with it, to be honest with you. I enjoyed it. It was a good tank to roll out in. It was pretty good fun. Um, you know, and I'll probably enjoy it for a, a fair few games. And like I said, I'll then probably shelve it. Because it's tier 8. And that's, that's the only thing that, it, that I think is it's biggest downside that it's come out in tier 8 along with the shed load of other premiums so there we go we do another 2000 bounce another 1400 get you know one kill only but we did pretty okay no i actually like this tank well i bought it clearly but you know if if i had the gold and i didn't have many tanks at tier 8 i'd be tempted and i i i really would be tempted if I had a lot of premiums at tier 8 and I wasn't a tank collector, maybe not, because I think it's a bit it's a bit steep. And, you know, a good friend of mine, Stubbo from 49 Div, he, he does some great economics reports on Blitz. And if you bide your time, guys, this tank will come around again and it'll be cheaper. It's as simple as. And there's another Chrysler K there. He hits me. But boom. Look at that lower glacius plate. Take him out pretty easily. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vid. Um, the Chrysler K is now out in the stores. I'm not going to tell you to buy it or not buy it. It's up to you. Please email me your replays at fujitsblitz at gmail.com. Comment and like and subscribe if you want to. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that's what it's all about. Fun and happiness. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has been useful. As I said, the Chrysler K is now out in the store. You've got two purchase options, 15,000 with a slot or 17,000 with all the equipment unlocked. And for an additional 2,000, you can get the Tomahawk camo and some attachment. And with that, stay tuned. There's more great stuff coming over the next few days.